Hello, my name is Evie Cuervo. Welcome to DeGiro Tech Talks. A number of factors, including crime and weather-related crises, are driving cities to transform their public safety and defense operations to become more responsive to change effectively. According to a report by the National Emergency Number Association, or NINA as it's commonly known, 80% or more of the estimated 240 million 911 calls each year are made from wireless devices in the United States. Why is that important? Well, consider that most 911 centers in the U.S. are operating on decades-old technology originally designed to work with landlines. To chat more about the movement to next-generation 911 systems, I'm joined by DeGiro's Global Director of Business Development, Jahan Kareem. Welcome. Thanks for having me. What is Next Generation 911 Centers? Sure, uh, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> but defining Next Generation 911 is almost like defining social media or artificial intelligence. Like there's a lot of different definitions, but at the crux of it, we're talking about technologies that can interoperate together, as you mentioned, legacy infrastructure, along with modern technologies, such as the ability to handle text, voice, and video at PSAPs, uh, while integrating some of, the, some of the newer technologies in terms of CAD, uh, call handling and uh, network technologies. We're really seeing, I think, as a part of these next generation 911 centers, a more integrated effort. Mm -hmm. And so is real time intelligence. Tell us a little bit more about how that works within this transformation. It's not just how uh, people are responding to public safety emergencies, it's how people are actually interacting and engaging those services. As you mentioned, uh, a lot of the engagements now will be a cell phone or wireless technologies. Uh, that engagement is now transitioning to texting, right? Or maybe even just sending images. Uh, people want to be able to access the government provided services in a more efficient and seamless manner. And I think uh, the governments and you know cities and municipalities want to be able to deliver those services with a more human factor approach, right? Having a more uh, natural engagement instead of just saying, hey, uh, you're, you're dealing with someone that's that's very rigid. People want to have a more human experience. Something really interesting that we're seeing now are public safety agencies beginning a transformation. This is obviously an incredibly complex effort, but agencies like uh, Cal OES are beginning to do that. What role does DeGero play uh, in helping with that transformation? Mm -hmm. I think uh, before I start talking about, you know, what role DeGero is playing in the, in the transformation, I think it's important for us to realize the magnitude of the transformation, right? These industries and these agencies and these organizations have typically not been at the forefront of, let's just say, technology modernization. Not to say that they haven't adapted, but the injection of technology and the rapid pace with which it's evolving uh, is giving them quite a challenge. And I, I can say that proudly, DeGiro has contributed uh, in a significant way as part of the resilient networks that they're deploying for these systems. And DeGiro is today providing uh, active 911 uh, call handling backup services in California. Here's an interesting stat. In the past three years in New York City, they've seen their text 911 uh, increase. They've had over 3 million text messages. What are we seeing in terms of trends that are happening at the same time that these transformations are taking place in next generation 911 centers? It's even moving beyond text. It's going to picture information. It's going to, to video, real-time video. And all of that drives the need for modern infrastructure where you have reliable networking capabilities, you have reliable personnel capabilities, and you have reliable infrastructure overall, right? But to answer your question, I think that adoption of modern technology is just moving at a very rapid pace. And I think we will see with the, you know, the invent of AI, even though it's been around for a while, the adoption rate is going to accelerate. This is exciting. What do you see happening over the next five years as a transformation takes place? And Keeping in mind that there are going to be multiple phases along the way in different parts of the globe. Mm -hmm. When we traditionally talk about tech, right, people are talking about, hey, where do you see yourself in five years, right? I think the way things are going, you'll be seeing things evolving in the next two, three, four, five, six months, if not faster. And because people are already talking about not just, you know, putting in text to a 911 call center or a 911 center or, or video, right, or having real time surveillance capabilities. It's already about injecting AI and injecting inherent security and inherent response into a city's operation. And there's already talk of, well, what if there is no 911 call, right? What if there is an emergency and the appropriate response teams already know where it is, who is dealing with it, and the, the right level of response is being formulated as it's happening or even before it's happening, right? Especially with the, 
with the wildfires that we're here experiencing in Canada on the East Coast and the wildfires that the United States deals with on a, on a yearly basis and even around the world. As you said, this is not just a, a 911 issue. This is a 112 or a 999 issue. Uh, as these things are happening and they're happening faster, quicker and more often, uh, the technology will be able to hopefully predict and respond and support the right level of uh, operations that are needed uh, for this type of effort. I want to pick up on something you just said. So as sort of these agencies begin to evolve, connectivity also has to slightly adapt to these different ways of responding to emergencies. Mm -hmm. How flexible do you need to be then to have that type of critical connectivity adapt? The way we approach it as a technology organization, as a technology company, and more importantly, as a service delivery organization, it's very important to stay connected with the customer and how they're experiencing the technology and how it's adding value to their day-to-day -day operation, right? Uh, I think myself, yourself, and the team that delivers this product and this capability in the market realizes the magnitude of the, the operation we support on a daily basis. This is a life-critical system. This is a mission-critical system. And I think the way we evolve is by lending our ear to our customers, right, at all times and always leading with the customer first, whether that's easy for us or not, whether that's, uh, I would say, even uh, practical for us or not. Because if we start limiting ourselves to our current capabilities, we will not be able to support the customer in the future. And I think that's where it's very important for us to develop uh, and, and evolve as a technology company, as a connectivity provider, uh, is by, by making sure that we are always adding value uh, to the operators and the responders. Thanks so much, Jahan. No worries. Thank you for, for having me. To learn more about DeGiro's mission-critical connectivity, head to DeGiro.com.